Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you are okay and that you had a really good week. This week we are still dancing in the dark. My vertigo hasn't completely gone. They think it's like labyrinthitis or something where the swelling inside of your ears is like really intense and you've got that constant dizziness. But I have acupuncture this week, so hopefully that is gonna shift it out and by next week I'm gonna have the lights on full form and you'll be able to see again. So we're still doing requests at this moment in time. This is a request on uh, Facebook. If you want to find me on Facebook, on Instagram, it's just Mystic Love Tarot. Um, and you can go and have your say about what video readings you want. As long as I can run them for the collective, we're good to go. So this one is what is their end game. And with that, I get the song End Game by Taylor Swift that says, I want to be your end game. So we're using two decks. Now this deck I have never used before. I got given it at the tarot conference like two years ago. Um, and it's the Housewives Tarot. Really felt the pull towards it. Never used it. Um, never felt the need to use it. It's just been sitting in my tarot box with like a tarot cupboard with like 200 other decks really felt the need to use it today and this one is the gothic tarot which is absolutely beautiful but it's a little bit creepy so creepy decks and it's teeny so deck number one and deck number two what is your person's end game think about you think about your person and as you're thinking about your person i want you to feel that energy within your heart center and push it to the deck that you are most drawn to Number one, number two. So as always, it works on the strongest mutual energy between you all, okay? Deck number one, let's do this. So let's go, let's go. What is their person's end game with deck number one? So end game is kind of like, what do they want? Where's it going? What's it heading? What is their objectives? What's gonna happen, okay? What do they want? What is their, their end game? What do they want at the end of it all? Okay, think about your person for me. Can we go to your person's thoughts, feelings, energy, emotions, and thought processes? And if my friend Marion is watching this, she's gonna hate me because it's a Baba Studios deck and I am bridging the tarot. And she's like, don't do that to those decks. Um, <laughs> but it really gets the energy into them in a really good way. So, sorry, sorry, mate. <laughs> okay, right, let's go. So, what? She's all right about it, just not with me Baba Studios deck and this is a Baba Studios deck. So what is their end game? What is their person's end game? What is your person's end game? So my guide is telling us to get eight cards. Let's get eight. Let's follow, follow it by the, the book. What is their person's end game? Two. Yeah, definitely got Taylor Swift Endgame coming up. I want to be your Endgame. Don't make me sing. <laughs> Clear audience to the worst singer in the world. Woohoo, hey. What is that Endgame? So, like I said, my guide said eight cards. Cards. Cards or cards. Six. So I'm getting um, another song for you guys. I'm having both of them because they jumped together. I'm getting, um, I can't remember who sang it. It's from the 80s. Hold on. Um, hold on for one more day, whoever sings that. I can't remember, really positive song kind of coming out of it. So your person, Marie, someone? Um, I know it's like, I know this pain. Why do you lock yourself up in these chains? No one can change your life except for you. Don't ever let anyone walk all over you. Something like that. Okay, coming through my right ear for you guys. Um, there are going to be changes that are happening around you and this connection. So, are you this person's end game? Is it what they want? Yeah, it is. It is, but they are blocking it. OK, now the reason why they're blocking it is because of stuff that has happened in their past. All right. So we've got issues here, maybe issues from exes, issues with kids, issues from childhood, difficult times that have happened, issues with parents. 
Um, either way, whichever way you're looking at it, the, your person is scared of creating this commitment towards you. Um, they have this fear-based energy of it because there has been stuff that has happened in their past and they're scared of getting their heart hurt again. They're scared of feeling that they're not worth it, that they're vulnerable. Your people as a whole don't like to err on the side of vulnerable, which is why they don't communicate about their feelings. So with you and your person, they want to be together, they want you and them to be together, but you have this kind of overriding fear over the connection with you guys, you know, a lot of difficult times. Now with this card over here, this kind of reminds me of Dracula, I don't know if you ever remember that film or uh, book about you know Dracula was there and kind of sucking blood you can find that the situation between you guys is sometimes feeling like you're pulling teeth that it's very very difficult and it's very very complicated between you guys um, and the reason again keeps coming back to your person and their kind of issues from the past they have been trying to work through them a little bit you probably don't see that but on a spiritual level so not on a 3d but more on a 5d on a spiritual level up there they have been trying to work through these issues from stuff from their past and it will it will um transfer down into the 3d you will end up seeing the results of it but it's just going to take a little bit of time your person is overridden with this kind of fear when it comes to you and them being together um and scared that you know they've worked so hard to become the person that they are today that their blood is going to get sucked that they're going to lose themselves along the way it also feels for a lot of people that their exes tried to change them and this is why they're a little bit reluctant to kind of offer that strength of commitment to you guys at the moment, okay? They don't want to change. They've worked hard to be the person that they are today and you guys have as well. So you have that very strong mirroring energy happening here, possible twin flame dynamic happening between you guys. They're scared um, that you're going to want to change them because they haven't, they're not doing things the way that you want them to. And it puts a bit of a block up in the way of it all remember that you should never want to change someone you shouldn't get in someone else's mini and go on the ride of their of of your life in their mini okay so what i mean by that and i know it's kind of a bit of a weird statement but you know your person comes and knocks on your door and says okay come on let's go on a date and you get in the car they, they come and get you up and they've got a mini okay and you go and you get in the mini and they start driving along and you realize that the mini's getting smaller and smaller the, the more experiencing you are having together and you're like i need to kind of cut off my arm of this mini throw it out the window so that we can build this relationship together so you cut off your arm you throw it out the window and you go a little bit further and then you're like oh i still don't fit so you cut off like your other arm throw it out the window and by the time you get to the end of the road with your person to the end game there is nothing left of the person that you were when they picked you up okay so there is this kind of when it comes to wanting to change people you should always know and trust that the person is the same person they were at the time that you met them and you aren't going to want to change them, okay? You have to, this kind of unconditional love is accepting people for who they are and their flaws. And it's the same with your person, okay? They aren't going to create these changes. You either love them as they are or, you know, you really think about whether this is something that you want because your person isn't going to change their habits. However, what they are trying to do, and again, on a spiritual level, is work through the shit that they have been involved in in the past. All right. Now, that sounds a little bit negative, but what we're going to do is we're going to move forward from that now. So once this kind of fear based energy has subsided, let's see when is this? How is this fear energy going to subside? Let's have a look. How is it going to subside? Okay, so what's going to happen with you and your person? They're going to realise um, that, you know, you're probably going to get a bit fed up with them and kind of distance yourself or feel like you're pulling away or just get to that point that you're like, F you, I'm not going to reply to you for a long time. Um, and once you do that, your person's going to really feel this sense of loss. And it is through losing you or missing you or just not getting the kind of attention that they've had from you all the way along that they are going to want more from you. And it is through that wanting more that things start to change with you guys. Now, there's a little bit of a fear on your part as well, kind of coming up over here, um, that your person is keeping secrets from you. You are worried, all right? Um, again, it kind of comes back to this changing energy over here. You don't want to change them. Um, take them as they are. Take them as the person that they are. And don't be afraid of the dark, okay? Try not to be afraid of the dark. Listen to your own instinct on it. Trust yourself. All right. Um, very strong cards of the moon and the devil kind of flagging up together. Potential issues of this kind of codependency coming up. Um, but again, trust in your intuition and what you feel is right. Don't be discounting what you feel. OK, 
Right, now moving on to more positive stuff. So once this kind of sadness, this heaviness hits and these um, working through these kind of darker energies between you guys, you have this movement and things start to turn. OK, with the Wheel of Fortune over here, this is talking about breaking a cycle, breaking the wheel, as the Khaleesi would say. You're going to break the wheel of the cycle that you have been involved in with this person. And they are then going to make these very quick and strong movement towards you. OK, hear the rain how relaxing is that we're getting darker in here um so you've got this then this immediate action coming towards you things shifting and moving more into your favor all right um they're still going to wear their the heart is still going to be a little bit guarded spirit i'll say but there is a shifting and a transformation within the situation and then you've got this kind of hope and agenda that you guys are going to be working out and things are going to be moving forward but there is a sense of them being vulnerable with that so as soon as this kind of guard goes down a little bit and they're starting to feel a bit more vulnerable over the situation, that's when they're releasing stuff from the past and that is when it can move forward with you guys and you've got things shifting, okay? So just holding on for the time being. So do they want you as their end game? Yes, they do. They're a little bit petrified. <laughs> they're a little bit scared of it at the moment. And again, kind of coming back to the past issues over here, you guys are worried that because they've been handling things a bit weird or they've been acting a bit weird, that perhaps they're hiding from you, hiding secrets from you. Again, trusting your own intuition on that. I don't pick up anything sinister or dark for the collective, but obviously that is your collective energy. Um, if you wanted to look at personal readings, you can just give me a shout. Um, so there is a progression route within this connection between you guys. There is a shifting in this connection but it has to kind of come from a sense of missing and for a sense of missing that comes from a sense of you guys detaching and the reason you guys are all detached is because your person's gonna be a bit of an idiot or annoy you or just not give you the behavior that you want and through that they'll miss you make this immediate action towards you and really work towards making you their end game they do see a lot of potential between you and them in the future they would like to see the two of you settled down and happy, they're just not quite ready, but they're making headway and becoming ready. But it has to come through losing and missing, or losing or missing, not both necessarily, just feeling that you're pulling away a little bit, you're going to get more from them. And when that happens, they will they will work towards making you in the relationship, making you their end game. So really important that you guys just hold on for a little while, clinging on to the situation. Patience is a virtue, spirit are saying. Uh, the pa more patient you are with the situation, the better it's going to work out for you. Um, try not to lose your temper over little things. If, you know, the best thing, if they are irritating you or being peevish and annoying you your best thing is to kind of just take a step back let them chase you let them come to you and the more you do that the more their energy is going to shift and move around you to bringing you forward with them okay and that is deck number one so if you need me just drop me a message and um, all the details are in the comments have a blessed week deck number one uh, your person has got these feelings for you they're working towards it they're just having a little bit of a paddy um, and panicking all right, guys, lots of goddess blessings your way. Ciao. Okay, guys, deck number two. Now, if you just tapped in, tuned in, turned on, um, I'm still dancing in the dark. I still got vertigo this week. They think it's labyrinthitis or something, or Meniere's Men disease. Um, something to do with my ears and my balance, so... Yeah, it's not been a, not been the greatest week for me. Um, today I feel like I've had about three glasses of extra wine rather than drinking a two whole two extra bottles. So I do feel that the the virus the, the virus the the vertigo is kind of they call it a virus because it's in a virus in your ears. Um, I do feel that that is starting to go, um, but still not quite myself. Got acupuncture at the weekend, so hopefully. By next week, we'll be able to put some light back on in the studio for you. So we're doing today is your person, your end game. So let's go. I've never used this deck before, ever. I've had it for two years since the last tarot conference because obviously we couldn't meet in person last year. Um, but I'm really drawn to it for you. So is this their person's end game? Let's see. Let's try this deck definitely drawn to it but specifically one of you guys is probably in love with this deck are you the person your person's end game three these are good cards now the spirit are saying as these kind of cards are jumping out that there is an alignment in your energy 
all your energies are moving together, working together and shifting together, transforming. Now, you're not going to feel that at this moment in time because you perhaps had these towers happening all around you. But there is a transformation occurring kind of right now in the connection. Now, some of you guys are potentially third parties. If your person is involved with someone else, that is coming up here. Now, if that isn't you, there is this kind of need for the situation to balance around you. It's really interesting over here that you are missing all the swords. You've got eight cards, you've got one major arcana, and you've got pentacles, cups, and wands, but you have no swords. So this relationship is kind of based more on a stability, security point of view. And again, this could be why it, third parties are coming into it if your person is already involved with someone else. Now, I am debating doing a third party reading for you guys. If you want it, go and shout it on Instagram and I will get it done next week for you or the week after. So if you want a third party reading, go and give me a shout. With this connection, with you and your person, there is movement, there is transformation, the towers have hit. Now, it's kind of, we've had this in last week's reading, tower, okay? Big T tower, little T tower. There's been some drama or about to be some drama around you guys where things have kind of got to fall down, fall down around you to be rebuilt in a more positive direction. Now, this has to happen. These towers, big towers, little towers, they have to happen for you guys, for your person to make this really strong movement towards you. And with that, we've got this um, song, You Only Know You Love Her When You Let Her Go. Okay, a little bit similar to debt number one, but debt number one is more this kind of transitioning um, through kind of this missing energy. Debt number two is there is something dramatic about to happen if it hasn't happened already. And through that dramatic happening is when the shift in movement happens. Now with third party situations, it could be to do with that. It could be issues within the family, issues with kids, issues with brothers, sisters, wives, girlfriends, anything along those lines. And like I said, if it isn't third party, it's a stability and security happening around your person the world is about to get rocked and through their world being rocked your world is going to be rocked as well the stability and security that they have always known is about to fall down around them and through that falling down of the stability and security is when this movement starts coming towards you arrows are flying things are really going to shift quite rapidly and quite quickly so you're probably going to feel like nothing is happening and then out of the blue major major shifts going on with you and your person now looking at this we have this very strong family dynamic which is why it's looking like third parties for a few of you you've got the king of pentacles queen of pentacles you've also got the knight of pentacles over here mother father child and then we have the six of pentacles indicating the third party however like i said if it isn't a third party situation that you back these decks with vertigo not good and put move it to the side if it isn't a third party situation over here, this is a triad. Now, I don't know if any of you, you know anything about triads. This is my druid, my druidry. A triad is the cycle of three, okay? Mother, father, child, the three. Three is the power number in all druidry. So even if this kind of situation has gone really peak tongue with you guys, there is an alignment of your energies. Things are shifting and things are moving for you. And with the Six of Pentacles, sorry, with the Six of Pentacles, Spirit just said solstice. So you're probably looking for a bit of a shift in dynamic change within this relationship around the summer solstice, which for those of you who don't know, is my birthday, 21st of June. OK, shifting, changing of dynamics with you guys, things moving and changing in your favour. It takes a bit of slow movement. All right. It's not fast, but it's like the towers are hitting, the rapid movement is coming in. And then for them to create these changes for you two to be together, that rapid movement will happen. So when we're talking about the end game of you guys, it is in losing you that they realise that this is what they want. So they do want this family dynamic with you. If they're with someone else, they, this is a, this is going to fall apart. OK, um, if they're not with someone else, this is what they want. And it's only through losing you that they are going to realise that they want this connection. We have over here. We have over here. Um, sorry, spirit. We have over here. This they, they caught me off guard a bit then. I just get um, this very strong energy kind of stepping into my ear as they're talking to me then. 
It was a personal message, don't worry. So you've got the Ten of Cups over here and you also have the Three of Cups. So at the end of the day, you have your celebration, you have your happiness, you have your romantic connection between the two of you and you have the next part of the journey. If any of you ever see Ten Ten, it's always this kind of ending, a new beginning happening with you guys. And with the Ten of Cups over here, signifying that where this relationship has been, again, potentially third parties, is coming to a close so that you guys can have a future with one another. And again, look, you can see this third party symbolism over here now again if it isn't a third party situation with you guys this just signifying the kind of end of a cycle and a beginning of a new one with you guys with the three of cups this is suggesting that there is a celebration going to be happening so at this moment in time does your person want you as their end game they're probably playing silly buggers you're probably finding that the energy is a bit stagnant um if they are communicating with you, they're probably not really using their mind or their intellect much and not thinking about things in a logical way. Normally with your people, you would have a lot of swords coming up, which is the mind, the intellect, the logic, but you haven't got it. So your person is acting more on the stability and security, which is probably why they're shying away a little bit from making moves towards you at this moment in time. But the tower will hit, things will erupt, things are going to change. Be prepared for this, okay? It's probably not going to be the easiest time of your life, but it will be worth it in the end as that movement comes in towards you. You have two cards, very strong cards of movement coming in with the Eight of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, two strong cards of movement, two strong cards of things shifting, and again, all being caused by this tower. Through this shift, you've got your celebration, you've got your union, you've got your coming together. You also have the energy balancing out a little bit better between you guys. And if there, again, if there are third party people involved in this, you're going to find that they are kind of standing on the ghost on the on the sideline watching what's going on. They probably just make quite a quick disappearance out of your person's life. You probably wouldn't be expecting that. You think they'd be lingering and fighting for them, uh, but it does look like they are just going to kind of do a bit of a disappearing act. If you are um, unaware of a third party, then please don't panic yourself, okay? These are for people that do know about third parties, all right? If you don't know about it, don't let your mind run hay a wall, a wall on you. You got your celebration, all right? Uh, some of you guys, babies, families, kids, yes, I do see that. Houses, yes, I do see that. Also, um, building a relationship on stable foundations, I do also see that. Like I said, it is through loss that you gain. And that is what's going to happen. Okay, and that is deck number two. So do they want you as their end game? At the moment, they're probably just being a bit stupid, stubborn and not giving you what you need or what you want. But over the coming months, weeks, tower's going to hit, things are going to fly out. Don't panic when it happens. Take a step back and be in allowance of it, saying, okay, knew this was going to happen. And through that knowing and that acknowledgement of it, let, it, let the dust settle. And through the dust settling, direct quick movement back towards you and that is deck number two so if you need me just drop me a message uh reading requests on instagram and facebook just go find me mystic love tarot all the details are in the comments i will have uh, i hope you all have a really good week and next week hopefully we'll be back with the light on all right guys lots of love ciao